Alrighty, great stuff. Hi there to the QGIS community and welcome to our next session. Um, this session is going to be fantastic. We're going to be looking at um, cartography or automation. Um, and our wonderful presenter, Alex, is going to take us through that. So I'm going to let him jump straight in because um, we've started a few minutes late. Over to, to you, Alex. OK, thank you, Amy. Thank you for your excellent work on this uh, open days. It's been brilliant. Thank you. Thank um, you. Just a small introdu introduction about myself. My name is Alexandre Neto. And I live and work from Portugal uh, in a small village called Cascais, which is nearby Lisbon, about 30 kilometers away. Um, I currently work as a self-employed uh, geospatial um, consultant. Uh, and I work with um, the QC Cooperative, which is a team of uh, uh, several people, including several core committers for, for QGIS. And also with a Portuguese company called Natural Gis, which is um, a company owned by Giovanni Man Mangi, uh, which um, many of us know from the QGIS community chat, uh, helping folks around, and also from the bu bug uh, reports where, where he's quite active. Um, personally, I have um, a blog post called Unchained uh, GIS which is a bit uh, stalled now, but uh, it still has some interesting things if you want to, to check out. And you can find me on Twitter on um, at uh, Alex Neto Geo, uh, and also on LinkedIn and so on. You could also find me on Facebook, but I will answer like one month after you try to contact me. So it's not a, the best option. Um, so regarding what I have to, to show, I, I don't have anything as prepared as uh, Ben or Pinder that I, I'd love to, 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 to see is a presentation. Um, it will be more, more of, a, of a talk. Uh, so I will share my screen. Let me know if you can see it. Yes. Yes, we can see yeah, it. Perfect. OK, so um, in uh, 2018, I was uh, invited to work in a, in a project um, to produce the Azorian um, land use uh, cartography. Um, and um, I, I, would, I would prepare the data set and uh, the cartography itself. I would briefly talk about uh, how the data set was prepared. But my true focus is, uh, and actually love, is on the cartography, and I'm. I will not be talking about um, uh, how to make the map look good or whatever. My main objective in this um, in this presentation is showing the the small acts that were needed to do to 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 do this. Um, um, Alex, could you just hide this sharing bar at the bottom of your window, please? Uh, sorry. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Um, so, um, Azores is um, a small, uh, uh, it's an archipelago uh, in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. Actually, let me just add some context here. And we can see where the Azores are. Um, and it's composed by nine um, islands. And the idea of the, the project was to produce the, the, the land use cartography for each of the islands at three different uh, levels of detail. So there would be a um, uh, higher detail level, uh, which is, comp which is each, each uh, polygon uh, would represent um, uh, a class. The class would be identified by the three-digit number. And then the consequent classes, the, uh, 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 oops, let me just change it here. And um, the, the second level would be just a generalization of the uh, third level and the same for the other one. Um, and the idea would be to, to, to produce this. This is the final product. 
So regarding the, the data and really quickly, um, the data would arrive to me like this, uh, 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 uh. like this basically. So the team that was um, uh, identifying the classes and designing, uh, they were working on in, in a CAD software, AutoCAD or something. Um, and they would draw the lines that separate each class. And then they put a, a little centroid in, in, in the middle. And so my job would be to transform this into polygons. And for that, I created a small, um, I created a small model. Did I show it here? Uh, it's not too big. And what this model would do would be um, transform all these uh, lines into polygons, and then for each um, for each line at uh, for each polygon, see which uh, centroids uh, fit in it and uh, and attribute that class. It would also I can run it really quickly here just. So this, this was the first part of automation, but it was more data preparation than actually cartography. Um, so in the end, I would end up with a, with a layer uh, separated with uh, in polygons, like this. And if I check each, each of these layers would have a, a class. Okay. I also, in the same model, I also would try to find areas that would be uh, less than 5,000 5, um, uh, square meters, which shouldn't be represented here. And also uh, polygons without class, without any class and polygons with, with too many classes. So this is the basic data preparation. And we had several iterations before each island would be um, finished in terms of classes. Um, by, the, by the way, uh, I would receive each island on uh, at a time. So for, the, for that reason, I, I end up um, uh, I, I end up starting uh, by working island by island. I was working with one of the smallest ones. So um, I was naively thinking, okay, I will do I will do a project and I will add uh, one layer for each uh, island and I work with that. Uh, after all, I was expecting not too many interactions. I would produce the cartography and uh, maybe one or two times to fix some problem. I couldn't be more wrong. <laughs> I had to do it so many times. Um, but uh, in, gladly at the um, early stage, um, uh, at the early stage, I decided to start pushing all the data, so all the polygons directly into a single table on um, PostGIS. Uh, and I can show it. Oops. Give me a second. OK. Hmm. Uh, I can show it here. It's not a problem. Let me see if this. Okay. Okay, not a problem. Uh, so in so what I did was in the same model, I would start to uh, I would start to okay. And here we can see it. Uh, okay. I would I would start to import all the polygons directly into the same uh, layer and same table. I would ident identify the class of the of each polygon, of course, the area, uh, the designation, which is not that important for now. But I would also indicate the island for which uh, the polygon presented. So I was separating um, all the polygons. Uh, by class, but also by island. This is Ilia, Ilia which means island. Okay, uh, and this means that uh, I would have uh, one single layer in my project that would represent all the all the island 
islands, okay? Like this. And then still on, um, I would love to show this, but uh, it's not going to be possible. Um, uh, at the same time, I would I would create a I created um, a materialized views to transform the level three classification in level two and level one. Basically, it was like a, a generalization of the uh, aggregation of the the data. So, uh, if for those that are not familiar with uh, the way this works, so the the first two digits of of level three are level two and the first digit of level three would be level one so it's it was quite easy to transform one thing in, into another and this was done it was not automatic because uh, it was taking too long but uh, whenever i wanted i i could just trigger that to 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 run and i would have three lay three different uh, layers for each uh, level okay so um the next next thing was I wanted so I wanted to for printing the maps I wanted to we wanted to print it at a scale of twenty five thousand so we had to create some kind of um, a grid cartogram where uh, we divided the old territory into thirty five thirty five uh, pages and. And if the final result that we were, we were looking at was something like this, let me see here. It was something like like this. This this was the. Let me. Okay. To do something like this, um, it this would be a, a simple atlas project. Um, I could, so I could use the the coverage layers just to. To cycle through each page. If this is was all the same territory, uh, continuous territory, and a single level, but the reality is that uh, it was not. Uh, so each paper, each page, um, would have to be printed in several levels. So this is page four, and it would be level one, level two, and level three. And check out the the legend. Uh, also change and at some point it would also move to another to another island so starting from the basics i will show the the project here the the layout uh, which is here okay so this is the layout in the, the um, layout manager and like I like I said to to go and print all the four pages for this island, for instance, uh, we can simply use or we would use the atlas functionality, which would use the coverage layer, which in this case called atlas atlas occidental, um, and what would this uh, would do is cycle for each of the polygons, and I'm talking about these polygons here. So uh, actually, I think I have here. So basically, it would cycle through all these uh, four polygons here. OK. Uh, and, and at the same time, uh, in the in the atlas for the map item i would move and I, it's somewhere around here i would control the extent of the map uh using using this uh these polygons okay so this is the simple usage so for for and this is where it starts the tricks let's call it like that so for for doing the same um but for three different levels uh, and this is something that i i would like like to 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 say the secret is always in the coverage layer so if we can do something in the coverage layer we can do a lot so let me show my coverage layer here and so this was filtered 
And actually, my coverage layer was more like this. I just went and I uh, triplicated the, the same polygon and they are one on top of the others. And I have one for level one, another for level two, and another for level three. So this is how the Atlas uh, moved from a simple iteration um, to something that iterates over uh, a place and also over uh, a level. So I will show it like this. And now, let's see if it works. It takes a while. Okay, so now I already have all the um, all of this island uh, pages for level three, for level two, and for level one, and I can just uh, move from one one page to to another, and at some point. It will show the other. Uh, this is level three. Now it will be showing da, 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 level two. Okay, and so on. So from the same layout, I'm not now producing not uh, one page, not four pages, but uh, twelve pages. Okay. Let me know if anyone has uh, questions about this. I'm not sure if I'm being. Uh, completely clear. So. I'll shout when there are a question or two. At the moment, they're just good luck messages. <laughs> oh, good. I like those. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Uh, um, OK, so this was the first, um, this was the first, uh, well, uh, non-common thing that I, I, I did. Um, uh, mm -hmm. So um, the next part was to transform this into do the same for all the all the islands, um, and this was not that that hard because uh, all I needed to do was to and I was I already have the island numbers here, right? So basically, I would replicate the same strategy strategic uh, with um, for all the islands so I would have a column with the number of the page a column with the level uh, and a column with the number of the the island uh, so I could uh, just go and cycle all the pages in on all, all the islands actually there is one page that is repeated uh, this page number seven is repeated for the island of Pico and also for Fayal. Uh, uh, and also, I was trying to hide some stuff here. Uh, I also add, uh, this I won't show right now. I also add some uh, naming of the island uh, to the coverage layer. And this would allow me to this allowed me to to do all this uh, labeling in an automatic way. So all these uh, items are they just come from the the coverage layer attributes, and they are automatic. If I I will remove the filter I have here, and now I have all the pages here. It will take a while. In a second. So now I have all the pages from all the islands in this uh, Atlas iteration. And I could just choose one and it will move there. OK. Uh, and all these labels would, would change, or at least a, a few labels would change. Now for, um, um, for more interesting things. Um, let's talk about the this legend. So the um, the legend was supposed to to have um, this look, and it would be composed by the um, by the, the the number of the class, the description, 
but also um, some um, statistics about the area and the percentage percentage of uh, this class for this class for each island. And this was the 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 another problem that I faced. So the um, I wanted statistics. Uh, first, I, I wanted something that looks like this. I will show how, how I did it. But also, I wanted statistic island by island. Um, so to get and to, to see how, how this was done, and this looks like the same element, but actually, this is, uh, this is shitting. So I have a, a legend, and then I have uh, a, 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 an element that is an uh, attribute table in here. This attribute table would come from um, a layer that was prepared on, um, again, I cannot show this, which is a pity. Um, but well, it, it is a layer that is prepared on um, post postgis, and it basically it will calculate the area and per percentage for each uh, island for and each level and since i have this um since i have this uh, island and level um uh, attributes i could use those on my on this table and we can see it in here that i have a filter that it's better this way i have a filter that will uh, make sure that the um, the coverage layer level it's the same uh, it will filter the so that the table only shows the the same level as the the one selected in the coverage layer the actual atlas feature and the same for the the island with the island number so uh, a very huge table would be filtered and only show what i want and the small act that I did is that uh, the attribute table does not. So the idea was to just uh, put these two together and make sure that the table would be of the same size of the, the legend. Uh, although the legend has, has lots of um, options to of spacing and stuff like that, um, the attribute table doesn't have. So the, the small hack was to uh, add a grid to, to my to my um, to my table and for that grid with with uh, trial and error I just um, uh, increased the uh, I put a color of a white color and I increased the um, uh, the size the width line so that it would fit and actually it worked quite quite well but there are two different uh, Two different um, uh, elements of the map. Okay. Now for the, the real one. Uh, so the idea here was to represent the um, the legend. Um, oh, let me show you how the legend works. So the legend actually shows. Um, uh, it's prepared to show all the three levels, but then. There is this option that that says only show items inside the linked map, and so when I deselect this, it will show all the the classes. But I don't want that. I only want to show the the classes relative to the level that I'm looking. But more than that, uh, I don't want to show the um, the classes of this particular page. I want to show the the classes of all the island of Payal. And this was the first uh, biggest problem that I faced. And so let's see how I, how I actually resolved it. So the first thing was I had a, a, a layer that I already showed, which is was the islands. And if I open the attribute table, uh, what I did was I would for I use a processing algorithm, and for each uh, island, I calculated the minimum and maximum x and y coordinates. So I had like a, a bounding box, um, a bounding box uh, around the island. 
and in the layout in the layout something that I have been show hiding for for a while I had just created a I had added a, another map outside my printing area and for this uh, map I would uh, control the extent of the um, of the map by using the x uh, and and y minimum and maximum values. That actually I didn't show it here, but they were actually joined to the to the. Um, <laughs> Here, huh. actually, it was here. Uh, ah, it's not this one. Sorry. Oh, I closed it. No problem. So I have just here. So mm -hmm. organized columns. So I have joined the two layers, the island layer, to the to in. Uh, improve my coverage layer. This is something that we, we can do. Now, each page has uh, the number of the island, but also has the extent of the island. And this was what controls uh, when I moved from one island to another. It would just move this map, and the legend is actually connected to this map uh, and not to the main map. And this is, uh, let me see, what is net Pico level one, Pico level, I was trying to, to find a level three one. Okay. And here we go. Okay. So this is kind of a scheme to, <laughs> to be able to do this. OK. Uh, so let's go show a bit more X. Um, one of the final problems that I had was that not all pages had the same size. So if we turn the uh, cartogram here, we can see that some pages would need uh, a bit of an extra space, um, and obviously we wanted to. We don't, didn't want to to change the scale of the map, and we we wouldn't want to do a another um, yet another uh, layout just for these ones. So I had to. In some cases, it's just a it's a big chunk that needs to be added. And in other cases, it just it's just a small piece that it's outside the the area. But they didn't uh, really um, it it was not uh, enough to create a new page here. And actually, this cartogram is what is reused from the military one. So how was this done? So you can already see that the um, the page it's a, it's a bit larger. But and this is page 12 of Pico. Let me find it here. Page. OK. And as you can, oh, I, I forgot to, to turn this off. But <laughs> uh, as you can see, the. Um, the page enlarged it, enlarged in himself automatically. And let me show you how this was done. So in the page properties, I would, uh, in the height uh, property, I add um, a small expression, which would say that uh, the value of the height would be 428 in the normal cases. And then for three special uh, pages, 35, 12, and 14, 
it would increase in four centimeter, centimeters. Uh, and this is just the page increasing, okay? Then I would need to take care of the, the, the map items. So what I did was uh, for the main map in position and size, for the part of the height, I added also a similar expression which would change with add for, um, 40 centimeters for for the height of this uh, map item for the same pages okay now one important thing is the this reference point because this reference point determines where what is anchored and where the, in which di direction the the map item will grow and so that's that's why it's it growed like like this uh and there is some problems here which is uh this uh ledge this um uh, graphic scale and this text that are now misplaced and what what i did was <laughs> It's the same, it's in position and size. What I did is for the um, Y coordinate of this, uh, of this um, element here, I would, I made it, uh, oh, it run away. Mm. Oh, I cleaned it cleaned it away so let me see if I can find the other one if it's done it's here position side oh, all right so it's not this one is sorry this one okay so what I did the, the expression that I used is this I I made it um, made it linked to the layout page height. So it would um, pick the, the value of 468. And since I, I, I was using this reference point here, which is this one, it will just uh, snap to the, to the end of the page. And I will do the same. Actually, I, oops, not again. And I would have to do the same for this one. Not this one. Yeah. Oh, I was looking into the wrong place earlier. Okay. And now the the page automatically changes of side size and um, and the elements will adapt. The idea here was that uh, the page, um, these elements I didn't change, these ones in here, because the idea would be to then fold the the, the, the sheet of paper um, in in this line here. Okay, and now for the last one, which was these small pieces here, which were very annoying. They would need just an extra space, um, but um, but I, I didn't want to add any more four centimeters to do this. And so I went for something, let me show. I'm, I'm going to show you the, the result first. I have it for this page here. So the idea was to do something like this, to add a small uh, area that would uh, get out of the normal frame. And I'll, did I do it? Well, again, by sort of a sh uh, 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 shitting. So where is it? Let me. Okay, so what I did was to add a very small, very small 
uh, very small map in here exactly with the same scale as the the rest of the of the the, the main map and then add a small mask to give a this uh rounded uh, aspect here a small polygon created with this uh, with with this tool here and i just masked the the rest of of the map and these are all they are all uh active here we can see all these uh, little pieces there are many for different pages and we can actually see them see them in the layout in here in here okay but they have one all of them have one particularity which is they are i will show this one so in the rendering part there is one option that allow allow us to exclude an item from ex exporting that was the, the final objective and what i did was i just created a, um, an expression that would evaluate for each of these uh, small uh, maps if it, it if, if it is the right um, page then it would show up in the export otherwise it would uh, not show up and this was done both for the small map which is this but also the the mask above and in the end everything uh went just uh just fine um the final thing that i actually didn't resolve at that uh time was that um the um, this island the, the project was done in actually two different uh, projections this would be the uh, utm 26 north and these two island would be uh, the 25 north uh, utm island so um by the time i did this uh it was not possible to control um it was not possible to control the the project um, uh, the the map uh, projection on the fly, uh, but now it, it it's possible. So at the time, I just I would just change the project um, the project uh, projection every time I needed to print just the, those two island. Uh, but now you can, and actually it's I, I I couldn't resist to to implement it, and it's quite easy. In my case, any island below eight would be EPSG 32626. Uh, and for the other two islands uh, would be 32625. And this would make uh, both the map and this, uh, this information here that would change. And let me get you. So Corvo, which, which is the the smallest island okay and um i forgot to say something actually this cartogram here uh was also benefiting from this uh extents here because the cartogram would be related to this map and not to the to this here and and i think uh, it's it that's it Fantastic. Thank you so much. Um, there are a couple of questions in the live chat. So one of the questions, um, let me just pop my camera on. <laughs> so one of the questions is how did you decide on the placement and size of the rectangles? Uh, actually, we used, um, we used um, a grid already prepared by the military maps. So we decided not to reinvent the wheel. We just used the the same uh, as they already used, and actually it was was beneficial because for the users they would they could have a topographic topographic map 
with the page number and go and open the, the same page for the land use cartography. So we didn't actually add much work on that. No, oh, absolutely. Okay, great stuff. And um, Maria says, thanks for the trick with the changing projection of the small islands. That will definitely help her save some headaches next time. <laughs> That's the idea because um, the, in the beginning, I said that I was preparing just one project because I I was hoping that I would only have to print this like one, two times, so it wouldn't be too mm. stressful. But uh, there was a... Um, a pre-release, then a final release, then a final release number two, and then a final release number three, four, five, six, and we went until nine. So every of these releases, I would have to print all these uh, pages, and it would be, it would have been a, a nightmare if it, if it wouldn't wouldn't be automated. Nowadays, I automate even anything with more than two pages or two teams. <laughs> Alrighty, then um, Nick Berman asks, could the rectangles be repositioned to give some overlap for each map? Yeah, sure. Uh, when you use um, when you use Atlas, I will share my screen again for a while. So when you use uh, Atlas and you don't even need to change the re rectangles, so you, actually, you actually could uh, make the um, each rectangle to overlap each other. But then the cartogram would be really noisy. Um, so we could just uh, increase the rectangles, but we don't need to do that because um, in the um, in the Atlas configurations here in the map, uh, we control, we say that we control the map extent by the Atlas. Right now, I'm using a fixed scale. Actually, there, there's another hack here that I, I'm quite embarrassed, but I, I will show it. Um, um, but in this case, I'm using a fixed scale, but we can put a margin around the, um, the, um, the, the Atlas feature, and uh, it, it won't work uh, right now, but actually it might. Now, because the scale is fixed, so it, it it's really fixed, so it won't work. But if you use a margin here, and you can set the margin, it, it will overlap with the neighbor neighboring uh, polygons. So that that should work. Uh, I'm going to show the that that small hack, uh, and the small hack is in here. You see the scale at uh, twenty five thousand. Uh, the problem is that sometimes because the 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 grid fits exactly with the um, the grid from the, the coordinates sometimes the corners of the of the map don't show the the labels here so this is a nasty act actually but what i did for production was to give a, a, a gentle bump into the scale it actually has no effect at all in the in the size of the printing but it would be enough to to show the labels in here. Obviously, the, there would be some better ways of doing this, uh, like adding some custom labels around here to to close these ones. Okay. Any more questions? Great stuff. Um, ben from our previous series says um, thanks, and he learned some really great new Atlas tricks. Um, and Nick just says thanks very much for um, showing that and letting him know. I don't know, Tim, if you have any questions? No, just a uh, comment to say it's really amazing to see what, what you are you tweaking your layout so nicely. I love the little hack with the map running over the edge of the, of the rectangle. That was really nice to learn, and uh, I will be maybe stealing some of your tips for some <laughs> mapping that we're busy doing, so thanks. Yeah, sure. That was the idea. <laughs> it's always so interesting to see everyone's workflow and everyone's little hacks and how they do each thing and each time you learn something you get better and better and quicker and i love the idea of sort of automating certain things just to make all of our lives a lot easier so definitely thanks for showing us these this is brilliant okay all righty i don't think there are any other um questions um, Lots of people saying it's really useful 
Mm, absolutely, and clapping. <laughs> Alrighty, then that's great. Then um, all that leaves is me to thank you so much for um, giving a session and thanks for being part of the open day. Um, there is thank a you. break after this um, session. So there's a little, well, it's gonna be slightly more than half an hour, but there is a break after this session. So please go grab some tea, go grab something to eat and be refreshed for the next two sessions of the day. And thank you very much. Thank you, Alex. Thank you, bye-bye. Thank you, Brigado. De nada. <laughs> Cheers, everyone. Cheers, all. In stream. <laughs>